A little known super glue from Ohio will be making its Super Bowl ad debut today. Loctite is spending more than $4 million for its 30 second spot and to produce the spot it has turned to the Minneapolis based ad agency Fallon. Now we can only show you a little bit of that ad. Loctite. All right, just a little bit. <laughs> that was just a little of the ad that will air in the fourth quarter of tonight's game. The $4 million buy is bigger than Loctite's entire ad budget for the year before. The little company's big Super Bowl gamble is getting a lot of industry attention. Ad Age is actually producing an online documentary about Fallon's effort. That scrutiny, of course, means the stakes are high, not just for Loctite, but for Fallon as well. And joining me right now is the cre Chief Creative Officer for Fallon, Jeff Klink. Thank you so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. All Thank right, let me ask you, are you nervous? Not a little bit. Not, uh, really? Yeah. I mean. I'm nervous about all the uh, horrible food I'm gonna eat later and what it's gonna do for my uh, emotional state, but um, I'm not nervous about Loctite's prospects in the Super Bowl. All right, so you're obviously very confident in the ad. Yeah. All right, let me ask you something. I mean, a lot of people are probably hearing this going, really? $4 million, you're not a big company, you're not a Budweiser, is it really worth it to spend that more than your ad budget from the year before on one 30 second ad? I think so. I mean, everybody's uh, opportunity out there is different. Budweiser's is different from, from Loctite's. Loctite needs to be known, so um, I can scarcely comprehend the questions I'm getting about risk. It would be risky for them not to advertise on the Super Bowl. It, there's that much of a, of a payoff. Well, yeah, and this is, uh, this is a valuable media property like the Super Bowl working the way it's supposed to. Okay. Um, a network makes a huge investment and, uh, and can command a gigantic audience, so um, they've created a wonderful, gigantic stage, and we need to be seen on it. Now, we just saw a little bit of, of another ad that you had done that's actually up on YouTube that's gotten 1.3 million hits uh, so far in just about nine months, which is which is pretty good. Let me ask you about this, though. So let's talk about Budweiser. We know that Budweiser is going to be advertising the Super Bowl. We know it's going to have the cute puppy and the big Clydesdales. Everybody knows what Bud, Budweiser is and what they make. Everybody, most people probably had a Budweiser. Loctite, it makes super glue, but my question to your people was like, well, is it the Super Bowl I, super glue I buy at Target? Is it just one kind of super glue? I mean, the name recognition isn't there. How hard is that? Well, that's the issue to overcome. There is no name recognition. People, I, when we even began this, I thought Superglue was a brand rather than a category. So did I. So, um, you know, Loctite invented Superglue. They created the category, and yet no one knows their name. Um, and they, in order to reclaim what is, you could argue, their rightful position in the market, they need to make a big move. All right, so how does it work? Do you all sit around and say, uh, we're gonna have dancing bears or we're gonna have dancing chubby people with fanny packs? I mean, how does, how, how does the creative <laughs> process work? <laughs> well, um, we tend to make it a little more complicated than that. Um, we had the benefit here of a, of a really good strategy from a really good strategist, uh, Juliana Simon, who noticed that everybody feels terrible about glue because they only need to think about glue when something breaks. And then the prospect okay. of figuring out how to fix it feels terrible again. Uh, but if you have a glue that works, you're happy. So what's that look like? And, and let's, like, let's shift the emotion of glue. And that's all we're trying to do. All right, so again, no, no pressure here. I just gave you my whole playbook. <laughs> okay, your whole playbook, all right. Um, but let me ask you about this. Last year, Radio Shack ran an ad that got mm. rave reviews about mm. how the company was stuck in the 80s. And the reviews, I went back and read them, great reviews. The company's still in the tank. Mm. How do you judge success from where you sit? Is it the sales? Or is it a great ad that people in the industry say, wow, Fallon did an amazing job, because people are looking at you? I don't think there's much value in uh, an industry hit. Um, in, this, in this particular case, name recognition for Loctite is the intended victory. Um, but you raise a really interesting question. There's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between ad popularity and sales or um, a company's health in the world. Um, and that's something everybody tries to navigate by various means. All right, so, so your goal is that the next time I go into Target and need super glue. I'm like, I want Loctite. You might even wake up in the morning and think, I need Loctite super glue today. 
and, and go pack. to Target for that purpose. Okay. <laughs> fanny pack, certainly. <laughs> fanny pack, certainly. So is there going to be a viewing party for the ad? Uh, yeah, we're going to watch it at the agency, and uh, it'll be a big family affair, like the ad was. Like the ad was. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, uh, congratulations. Obviously, they could have turned to many ad agencies across well, the country. So. Glad they turned to us. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jeff Kling, and thank good luck. You, we, we hope it really works for, uh, as a Minneapolis agency, we, we want you guys to do well. Good. So. Thank you very okay. much. All right.